Hi friends, in previous video we have seen the principle of operation of synchronous motor. Today we are going to see making synchronous motor self-starting using damper winding. Since we already know that synchronous motor is not a self-starting motor, it requires some external means to start. So there are two ways. First one is using induction motor principle and second one is using separate starting motor. Using induction motor principle is also called as using damper winding. Using separate starting motor is also called as prime mover method. So now today we are going to see making synchronous motor self starting by using damper winding. Right? So here this is a simple synchronous motor. It has stator and it has a rotor. Rotor has saving pole and stator has stator winding, uh, stator poles. So now it is a four pole synchronous motor. So here rotor poles have phases, pole phases. These are called as pole phase. Or we can call this also as a pole shoe. Pole phase or pole phase or pole shoe. So in rotor pole phase, there are slots given. Here slots are there. In this slot, sir, damper winding is placed, right? So this is called as damper winding. Damper winding. So damper winding is placed in the slots of the rotor pole faces, right? So in rotor pole phase, there are damper winding. So damper winding can also be called as squirrel case winding. Now here see this damper winding is simply a copper bar. These are the copper bars. So these copper bars are ended with short circuits. That means these copper bars are short circuit and the ends. Right? So it is simply like a square case winding. There is a three-phase supply given to the synchronous model state of winding. Three-phase supply is given. Right? So when three-phase supply is given to the synchronous motor state of winding then there is a rotating magnetic field this rotating magnetic field produced in the state of winding it is assumed to be in clockwise direction so rotating magnetic field is in clockwise direction see here there are field winding there is field winding around the, right four core of the rotor poles so this field winding, this field winding is excited by DC source. When there is current flowing to the uh, this field winding, then there are alternate north and south poles formed. But here we should remember one thing. Here initially the field winding is not excited. Initially the field winding is not excited. Initially three phase supply is given to the state of winding of the synchronous motor. So there is a rotating magnetic field produced which is in clockwise direction. So that this rotating magnetic field cutting is uh, auxiliary winding or copper bars that are which are already short circuit at the ends. So when this rotating magnetic field is linking with this uh, square case winding or auxiliary winding, so then there is a current induced in this auxiliary winding. The induced currents in auxiliary winding creates a mechanical energy. That means that, that means that there is a twisting force, like the, the principle of induction motor. So there is a torque developed which makes the rotor poles to rotate in particular direction. Right? So now the rotation of uh, this rotor poles will be in the direction of a rotating magnetic field. Right? So it happened. This rotation is happening so because of this auxiliary winding or spiral case winding. So whenever this rotor is rotating with the speed of rotating magnetic field, that means whenever it catches the speed of rotating magnetic field, called as synchronous speed, then the excitation, the DC excitation, is given to the field winding of the rotor, right? So when DC excitation is given to the field winding of the rotor. Then there are alternate north and south poles formed. Right? So when alternate north and south poles are formed, 
it is seen that at particular moment these outlet north and south poles are right um, having force of attraction in the poles of the state here one thing must be very important to be remembered that is here whenever we are giving the excitation to the already rotating rotor poles right so then you know you should remember one thing we need to find out the right moment in right moment only we need to give excitation that moment must be a moment at which the poles of the rotor must be okay must be facing the opposite polarity poles of the stator right so at right to moment there should be dc excitation given to the field winding of the rotor poles you know what is the right moment already this rotor is rotating with the help of induction principle you know auxiliary winding with the help of auxiliary winding there is existence of induction principle so with the help of induction principle then this rotor is already started to rotate so when this rotor is catching the speed of this internal speed of rotating magnetic field then we need to find out a right moment to give excitation you know why i am telling the right moment to give excitation the excitation should be given a moment in particular in the particular moment the poles of the rotor and the poles of the stator must have force of attraction between them that means uh, the pole of the uh, the poles of the uh, rotor must be facing the opposite polarity pole of the stator right so whenever we give uh, this excitation right moment then it is seen that the poles of the stator and the poles of the, the pole of the stator and pole of the rotor are having force of attraction between them right so when these are having force of attraction between them then these two poles are magnetically locked very strongly right so when these are magnetically locked very strongly then this stator magnetic field okay so drags this entire rotor assembly in the same direction with the same speed right in its same direction with its same speed so it is how this rotor is now started to rotate you know after uh, this rotor is rotating with the synchronous speed there is no any relative motion between the rotating magnetic field and this damper winding it can zero because you know this damper winding is also moving with the same speed of rotating magnetic field so that is why here the relative motion between this damper winding and rotating magnetic field is zero so so there is no currents induced further in this damper winding it happened after it happened after this excitation is given right so then whenever there is no currents induced in damper winding there is no magnetic flux produced from the damper winding then there is an induction principle so that is why after excitation is given to the field winding when motor is uh, rotating with unidirectional power with strong magnetically lock between stator poles and the rotor poles then this damper winding will be removed from the operation right so that means uh, these damper windings are used or swelling gauge winding is used only for starting purpose after motor catching its synchronous speed and rotating with unidirectional torque then this damper winding operation will be disconnected from this synchronous motor principle of operation so this is what uh, how the synchronous motor can be uh, made self starting using damper winding